You can also go to the configure pull down menu and you can see how to programmatically set up different configurations like programmatically change the data logging rate or change the alarm logging server or change alarm notification features of which users to email or what types of tags to write when uh, when you're keeping track of how many alarms have occurred over a given period and you can see here's how to programmatically configure security one of the best features I like is the easy to use CSV import and export methods that are available in the OPC systems component this is a free component you can use that supports all of these methods described here under all of these forms but if we select CSV import and export we then see some different methods that we can use to return the structure of what a CSV export would be for all of the tags in a system and then when we select tag CSV export we're actually exporting from the system in Texas all of the values uh, all the properties of those tags from that system we can do the same thing for all of the data logging alarm logging alarm notification features and uh, security settings so you can see even across the internet you can change say recipe configuration parameters that uh, when you're transferring values say from your system in China to the production line in Texas uh, you can do one central location to manage all of those remote sites from the configuration tools this example application also has a login selection as well as the web-based application that is used to demonstrate how you would implement the security features of opccontrols.net, opctrend.net, opcalarm.net. Let's take a look at where uh, the source code of the, that example application is installed. If we go back to the programs and opcsystems.net, there's example code that you can take a look at. Let's bring that up. This will launch Visual Studio for you. If you haven't used our components in Visual Studio for the first time, I would recommend going to the training guide. Let me show you where that is. If we go to Start, Programs, OPCSystems.net, and then Help, there's a training guide. Let's open that up. For example, if you wanted to see how to add a trend window to a component to a Visual Studio application there's a section that says um, trending components we can select that under the bookmarks and follow along with how to use it in the free to use OPC systems HMI container or how to add a trend window to a Visual Studio application step by step walking you through how to do that So back to the source code example, here we can see the example application that installs with the software. So you have total access to all of the code behind that ap application. Well, if we take a look at some of the forms, you probably won't find much code at all. For example, under the labels form, there is no code. However, if we run the example application, and select controls labels this is what uh, each of the properties is defined that tags as they change are changing the text property um, where they are located on the form back color if we ch if we control the pump on and off we can change for color back color enabled visible properties these are all different kinds of properties that you might see. Also, uh, you might take a look at buttons. Buttons are allowed to turn things on or off or set to specific values. We even have keypad execution. So you can bring up a keypad, enter in a specific number, click enter, or you can. we even have keyboard entry for text string as well. Let's take a look at some of the other forms that do have some code in the vb.net example. One that is very interesting is the 
form read values. This is how to programmatically access data from your service. Probably the easiest uh, OPC client component you're going to be able to use with Microsoft Visual Studio. Because it basically comes down to one add tags method and one event method. Let's take a look at those. So here within the code, if I search for add tags, there we go. Here's how we would basically tell the OPC controls data component, these are the tags that I am interested in, and let me know any time those, act those values actually change. So if we look at the OPC controls data component, there is an event which is values changed all. In this, what we're getting is we're getting an array of tags, values, qualities, and if we look over to the right, timestamps as well, of all of these values that have changed. And anytime you want to refresh those values, all you need to do is call add tags again. Here in this example, instead of just processing the data directly, you're welcome to do that. However, we're showing you some techniques that are very helpful as well. When you have a multi-threaded application, you might want to put the data in a queue and then process that queue at your own time, uh, at your own interval, on your own clock interval. We also have an example in here of storing values in a hash table. So we're showing you examples of both a queue and a hash table. Those are just for examples for you to use. However, the component itself just involves add tags and the values changed event. To write to values, let's take a look at the form called form write values. And again, pretty easy code here. To get the feedback of a tag, you might want to call add tag, which this example is doing. But just to send a value off, you just have one method that says write tag. You pass it the tag you want to write to, as well as the value you want to write to. If you want to write to multiple values, call the method write tags, pass an array of tags and values that you want to write all together at once. Very useful feature in order to turn your Visual Studio application into a real-time SCADA product. To set up the system manually, we typically use the configure application, which can be found under the program group opcsystems.net. And the configure OPC systems application, that's the thing to select. This application is also how you license the software. Under configure license, you will receive an internet activation code, which is a serial number, to be used with the electronic activation button found right here in the middle or you can provide the license code and receive a license key manually. Again, this is server-based licensing, so then all of your client connections that are connected to this service would then be enabled. There's also the section under Configure Tags. This is where you can manually set up tags for, say, doing some alarming. Here we have a tag set up uh, to the ramp item in an OPC server, and it also has the high, high high, low, low, low alarm limits defined. These alarm limits themselves can be coming from other OPC items, maybe possibly a calculation result. Um, so alarm limits themselves can be from a different data source. If you want a value to be coming from a Visual Studio application, you set the data source to the default of value, and then you simply define that um, to a default starting point if you'd like, but then your own Visual Studio application using the data component can read and write to that. Other types might be a calculation. If we take a look at, um, let's abort these changes, and go down to a tag called tank level as an example. Here's a calculation that's using the pump, the fill valve, and the drain valve together to come up with uh, that value that we were using earlier in the symbol screen. And so with the calculation you can define your own functions 
and insert local and remote tags. Anytime you want a remote tag, simply connect in and type in either the IP address or registered domain name here in the network node field and then hit the select button and you will then be connected to those systems. Note the direct OPC connection right here. In many of the components like the trend and the visualization components and also right here in the uh, equations that we're looking at you can use direct OPC to browse OPC servers on the system you're connected to keep in mind that might even be across the internet you're then browsing those OPC servers for the items that you're interested in and that's a direct connection also under the configure application is configure data logging this is where we define data logging groups that we can activate. You might want to do event-driven logging, define it to a particular tag that you can browse to. And again, that can be a remote tag because we are providing queuing. And then under the Tags tab, you would define the definition of the tags you want to log. Under the Database tab, define it to which database engine you want to use. SQL Server is very common specify the server name, database name, table name, and then it will automatically create that database table and all the field names we define under the tags for you. Under configure alarm logging, we can specify to log alarm conditions that occur. Here under the filters tab, we can define what types of alarms we want to include, and also under the alarm groups, that was defined under the tags property as an alarm group, we can define what uh, types of alarm groups do we want to include. Under the database tab, we define the database provider we want to use, again providing the server name, table name, and database name, and it will automatically create it for you. Under alarm notification is where we can specify to email certain users when alarms occur and under the tags tab we can define opcsystems.net tags to keep track of say how many alarms are currently active in the session that I have right now or how many alarms have occurred in say the last 24 hours that would be this property again all of these properties can be programmatically set up as well under the reports tab is where we define which reports to execute. How to create the reports is found under start, programs, opcsystems.net, and the report designer. That application is used to then create an XML file that you then define here to create web-based applications, reports, or Acrobat Reader uh, report files that you can then in turn email and send to specific production people. Under configure recipes is where you define the recipe management software. Under the tags tab is where you define the field names when you're using multiple record type or if you're using single record type it's where we do a mapping of tags to field names. And then under the database tab again f defining the server name, database, and table name and here's the query string that can actually be automatically set from another OPC systems.net tag. Under the recipe management it's important to point out here's the confirmation and error feedback tags that can be written back to the So the configure application is how to do a lot of setup. I will point out that all the configuration properties have a nice CSV import and export found up in the menu bar. So if we do a CSV export, say of, let's go to the tag section. Export. You simply specify a file name. Save it. And now you have exported the entire tags uh, that's currently active in the system to a CSV file. So now if you think that this 